the vegetables we're using today is we're going to use sliced onion, mm -hmm. sliced carrots, mm -hmm. uh, these, uh, sliced celery here as well. You can use like parsnips if you want as well. They won't be, uh, some people don't like celery or whatever, so you can, oh, okay, so you can use yeah. Yeah, you can, um, yeah, this time of year, like you know, it's all root, like a root vegetable yeah. the autumn season. You can hear the sizzle there in our project. Indeed, again. He's sizzling. So, as I said, yes, you, you can mix and match with the vegetables yeah. to, to your own taste. And uh, so, as I said, have onions, carrots, and celery. So, the beef is all brown there now. So, just lower the heat down. Yeah. And we're just going to transfer the beef into a, a bowl. And now, as I said, like, the flavours are all still in the pot, and you can see all the gritty bits yeah. from the beef. So you just add in the, the vegetables. No oil. You just put it in on top of just well, There's still a bit of oil left in there from, right. the, yeah. from the... If you need to put more in, just put a little drop in. It only requires a little drop. Yeah, I always find vegetable oil uh, is, is much better for when you're cooking uh, right. the beef casseroles. Rather than... Than olive oil. Okay. See, beef, as I said, with vegetable oil, it has a higher temperature capacity. Right. You know what I mean? They won't burn out as quick oh, okay. as, as olive oil. And then the onions will, will sweat, I mean, they lose water naturally. I mean, yeah, yeah. So the onions there will sweat now with the carrots. And it's capturing all the flavour there. The smell is delicious in here, doesn't it? Mm. Smell of casserole. Right? Yeah, I think it's that lovely earthy kind of country, this kind of year. Yeah. 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 So just get a little bit of twisted salt and pepper in there. And a little cracked pepper. Mm. Yep. And then normally then what you do is you put a sprinkle of flour in there, right? And that will catch the oil. Okay? It's so it's gonna be a thickening agent. Yeah. Okay? That's a great tip. I never knew that. Though. So and when you put the flour in then you give it a good stir. Mm -hmm. Okay? And basically what you're doing is you're cooking the flour out. Okay? It's, it's called the roux, basically. It's a thickening agent. So it's a small little roux you have in there, right? So then we just add in the beef. Mm -hmm. A little bit of flour here which is a demonstration purpose to put in there. <laughs> <laughs> we can verify he has used the flour. <laughs> and you can use self-raising flour, plain flour. Oh, any flour. flour. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Right. 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 Because that's the thing, you have beef raising these, because these are great recipes, and then you say, my God, we'll have to buy in these yeah. ingredients. And so the trick is yeah. there now, is you, you don't want to burn the flour, so it's just a quick mm -hmm. store it. Right. You're just cooking it out. Then you add in the beef. Hear the sizzle there now again. Awesome. It's a lovely sound, a lovely smell, and I'm sure there'll be a lovely taste of it as well. Can't wait to get the other laughing gear around there. Yeah. Now they're good. <laughs> so you can have a feed. <laughs> <laughs> this is my favourite part here now. This is where the, the red wine goes in. Mm. <laughs> and are you supposed to take a mouthful like that before you put it in? No? <laughs> good chef to take two. <laughs> so uh, you put the, basically put the red wine in. How much? How much do you like? <laughs> <laughs> There's no scientific measures here. No. So basically what happens there is the the wine there is going to deglaze the pan. So yeah. all the bits that are on the, the bottom of the saucepan and the flour, yes. it's just going to deglaze it and yeah. capture all the flavours. And then you just cook that out, just give it a good stir. And at that stage there uh, you can substitute the red wine if you want like with a can of Guinness. Or you can use beans. Whatever your preference is. Yeah, Lovely right. smell of that though, isn't it? It really is amazing the difference the wine tastes. And it, funnily enough, who has just walked in? The glamorous granny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. And wine connoisseur. So that's cooking out there, right? Mm -hmm. And then what we also do then is we, we can put a bay leaf in. Right, you can put two in. <laughs> you can put, we put two in there. I like oh, let's be extravagant here. I like the rustic flavours this time of year. So what you can see there, like the wine I was taking it up with the beef yes. and the onions, it was a lovely colour there. You had the, the orange, the white and the green. Mm -hmm. and the tasty orange beef there going through. Very patriotic actually, the orange, there white is. and green. I like that there you colour. Go. Nice yeah. tri colour yeah. beef stew. <laughs> so that's cooking out there. Now, it's then, the most delicious smell of that, I have to say. Flavours, yeah, it's really, really And then the next stage is then you can add, like if you have beef stock uh, made up, you can add that in. Yeah. Or you can just add water. And put like a, a beef stock cube in. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. So you just add that in there. Would you put the entire beef stock cube in, or would you put that? Put it. Yeah. 
for, for, if you're making like say like about a kilo of beef, I only put about a half of it in. I would because yeah. uh, the stock juice can be very salty. They can, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. But like it's, you know yourself down to your yeah, your it's taste. down to your own uh, personal preference. Yeah, so just store that there, and you put the stock cube in. And you let that cube go. So you just let that kind of dissolve. In, in the mix there, the stock cube. Yeah, bit. yeah. So that will just uh, dissolve away now. And then basically, you can cook that on the stove. I well, give it about two hours on the, on the. You bring it to the boil and then just reduce the heat for it to simmer mm -hmm. on the stove for about two hours and just keep stirring it. And if you need to top it up a stock or water, uh, just add a drop in according. Yes. And then what, eventually, what will happen is the beef will come nice and tender. Mm -hmm. The vegetables will be all cooked out. And then the sauce will actually reduce and darken like your gravy. Mm, you know what I mean? Yes. you have the red wine and you yes. have the beef stock and the beef yeah. and, the, and the flowers all cooked out. So that's going in there. Okay. And the wonderful thing about this time of year is people, you know, have time issues. So you could, you know, as you say, two hours, let that cook that very slowly. It can get on and do other things. In yeah, house, work you know? away. Yeah. I said you can do it on top of the stove or if you put it in a casserole dish, you can finish it in the oven. Yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? And in the oven, how long would you leave the same for about two hours? A bit two hours, two and a half hours in the oven. I right. give it a little bit longer in the yeah. oven. And at what? Um, I put a preheat your oven to 180 degrees. Right. And then for the first uh, first half an hour, 45 minutes, I have it at 220. Mm -hmm. okay. And then I just drop it down to 180 then. So just basically just to give it that initial blast yes. of heat. Yeah. And then just reduce it back down to 180. Mm -hmm. And uh, and just check it now and again, just give it a stir. Yeah. Just to move the flavours around. As you would on the top of the oven, you would just give yeah. it a stir every now and then. Yeah. It's a great um, it's a great dish for, for this time of year, Carl. I mean, because you have uh, all the vegetables in it, you have the, the beef in it, the stock in it. I mean, there's lovely colours in it as well. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a, it's it's, it's, it's like a, a big bowl of soup. I mean, it's it's food for the soul, isn't it? Yeah, it's food for the soul. As I said, like, and it's, it's full of hearty flavours. Yeah. yeah. And rustic, and I said, that everything's in season as well at this time yeah, of year. Yeah, it's wonderful. So yeah. you're getting that nutrition, like, you're getting the protein, you're getting the goodness of the vegetables. So it's a healthy option as well. A healthy yeah. option, yeah. And then uh, you can serve that with mashed potatoes or chant potatoes or called cannon potatoes. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of selection. Or you can garnish it with uh, herb dumplings, which I've made. Basically all they consist of is uh, beef suet, uh, flour and uh, herbs and uh, boiling water. And you bring it together as a paste. Like, and then, uh, well, it's, it's more like a dry paste. You know, like it's moist, but it'd be dry on the outside when you roll it. Carl, sounds really interesting to talk about dumplings. I'd be inclined <coughs> to think, oh, that's long-winded, so I kind of just do the potatoes. Mm. So I'm really interested to see how you do this, you know, and the um, yeah. whole process, because well, it's a lovely alternative. I'll tell you what, as that's, as that's kind of similar in a way, then what we're going to do is we take an ad break, and then we'll be back with more with Carl's Kitchen Flavours directly.